Hello everyone, my name is Dan the Tutor. This is a clip from one of my weekly group tutoring sessions at the University of Delaware for Physics 201. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you and enjoy. So let's go ahead and look at a couple examples here. Uh, for the examples, I will be using counterclockwise as positive and clockwise as negative just to follow suit with the equation. So here's the first one. I want to find what is the net torque on the wheel below. I see I have three torques here. The 30 Newton force. Remember, forces produce torques. So I have a 30 Newton force, a 50 Newton force, and a 100 Newton force like this. Let's deal with these forces one at a time, starting with the 30 Newton force, since that's the easiest. So again, torque is defined as force, the perpendicular component of force times the distance. And now you may be wondering, well, that 30 Newtons, is that the perpendicular component? I don't even see an angle. I'll tell you this. The answer is, it is perpendicular. Why? Because here's, it's perpendicular to what? It's perpendicular to the radius. Here's my radius. Look at that. That forms a 90 degree angle, which is perpendicular. Okay? And the other reason why it's exactly perpendicular, because think about this. If I were to actually push this wheel you know, in the direction that this picture has, like to the left, like this at the top. Think about it. That's going to make the wheel spin. And that's exactly what we're talking about with, with torques. We're talking about forces that are causing things to spin or rotate. So for the first one, I'm going to say torque is equal to 30 newtons times my distance or radius, which in this case is two meters. And now is it positive or negative? Is it, po is it a positive torque or a negative torque? Well, to answer that question, this 30 Newton force, is that in the clockwise direction or counterclockwise direction? If I were to kind of follow the arrow here, I see that it's continuing this way. It's causing the wheel to spin that way, which means the 30 Newton force is counterclockwise. So that's going to be positive. Does everyone see that? I know it's a confusing topic, but if anyone has any questions, please say it now. Okay. Now let's deal with the 100 Newton force because that's the second easiest. So for this one, notice if you were to pull on the wheel in this direction, it's not going to spin. And the reason for that is if we were to draw a line from the center of the circle to that 100 Newton force, in other words, the radius or the distance, that radius is parallel with the 100 Newton force, not perpendicular. So for that reason, the 100 Newton force, that torque is just equal to zero. That torque is just equal to zero. Okay, good. Now for the last one, our 50 Newton force. So for the 50 Newton force, first of all, I'll just tell you it is perpendicular. Perpendicular to what? Perpendicular to the radius right there. There's our 90 degree angle. Perfect. And now I need to say that torque is equal to the force, which is 50 times the radius, which in this case, it's only located one meter away. It's not two meters. It's one meter away. So that brings up a good question. Does it matter where the force is located? Yes. It's the same reason, why do they put doorknobs, here's a serious question for you guys, why do they put doorknobs on the opposite side of the hinge? They're not just doing that because it looks nice, it's because that gives you the maximum torque. If they put the doorknob in the middle of the torque, in, I'm sorry, in the middle of the door, you would have half the torque, you have to work twice as hard to open a door. It sounds obvious, it sounds intuitive, but there's physics behind it that explains everything. It's pretty cool. Unless you don't understand it, then it sucks. So it's 50 times one, and is it positive or negative? Well, notice this 50 Newton force, if I kind of just draw an arrow in the direction of motion, it looks like it's causing the wheel to spin clockwise. We say clockwise is negative, so it's negative 50. So what does this mean? If I were to find my net torque, my net torque, it's gonna be 30 times two, which is 60, plus zero, which we don't care about, and then minus the 50 uh, <clears throat> torque. The answer is going to be 10. And what's the units for torque? It's going to be the Newton times meter. These are the units. You may be wondering, hey, Newton meters, isn't that the same thing as the joule? If you said that, you would be correct. And I'm surprised that you knew that. But it's not the joule that, because, and specifically because joules are, it's just a different topic in physics. The units, yes, they happen to be the same, but we say Newton meters because torque is such a different topic then work and energy that we need new units because these two things do not mix very nicely. Any questions on that? Now there's one more torque problem we want to look at here. This one's, uh, it just looks more complicated. So let's talk about it. What is the net torque on the wheel below? Let's start with the top one. It's the hardest. 
five newtons at a 30 degree angle like this. So once again, I don't know if it's sine or cosine just yet, but I do know this. If I were to draw my components, a red component going up and a blue component going to the right, and there's my right angle, this is a right triangle, the component I care about, is it the red or is it the blue? It's gonna be the blue because that's the perpendicular. It's perpendicular to my radius, which means that that torque is going to be force five times distance. My radius, we see right here, it's six, so five times six, and then times, in this case, we see the angle is 30 degrees, and it's the opposite leg. F perpendicular is opposite the leg of the 30 degree angle, and opposite uses sine. So it will be sine of 30. Now, if I gave you that other angle, if I gave you this 60 degree angle right here, then it would be cosine of 60. Everyone see that? So it's not always sine. It really depends on what angle I give you. Now, you only need to choose one, so I'm going to erase the 60 degree angle, but it's good to know, just if you ever see that problem. Okay, and one last thing, this torque, this 5 newton force, is that pushing in the clockwise or counterclockwise direction? Is it going to be positive or negative? Well, if I think about which way it's causing the wheel to spin, I kind of just draw my arrow in the direction of motion, that looks like clockwise, which means it's going to be negative. I'm going to simplify this, torque equals negative 30 times sine of 30 is just one half, what a coincidence. That's going to be negative 15. Uh, again, the units are Newton meter, but I'm going to worry about Newton meters at the very end of the problem anyway. Okay, so the next force, let's look at this 3 Newton force over here. Question, is this one exactly perpendicular to my radius? Yes, it is. Even though I kind of put it at a weird spot on the circle, if I draw my radius right there, I see I still have a right angle. That torque is super easy. It's just going to be torque equals 3, the force, times the radius, 6, and in this case, I don't even have sine of an angle because it's already perpendicular. We got the perpendicular component already. So if there's no angle, if there's no angle, then it's either going to be just the just the full, like you don't even need to worry about the sine or cosine. It's just going to be one because sine of zero degrees, I'm sorry, sine of 90 is one. If that's confusing to you, don't worry about it. Just worry about is it parallel or perpendicular? Is there an angle in the first place? So this torque is just going to be 18. Oh, and one more thing. Is that going to be positive or negative? So looking at this 3 Newton force, I see that the, you know, just kind of following the direction of motion with this arrow here, which I like to draw the arrow every time because I think it's easier. We see that it's going to be counterclockwise, which we're defining as positive. So it will be positive 18 Newton meters for that torque. Then the final torque we have here is this 10 Newton force on the left. This one I think is pretty straightforward. It's going to be torque equals the force 10 newtons times that radius which is only four meters this time it's not the full six it's only four and then do we have sine cosine of some angle well i don't have an angle and i also see it's perpendicular again perpendicular to my radius right there there's a 90 degree angle which means it's just going to we don't have to worry about the angle it's just 10 times four and then i have to ask myself is that a positive or a negative well Again, following the direction of motion here, it's going to cause this wheel to spin clockwise, which means it's going to be negative. So negative 40 for the last torque. I add the three torques together. So net torque is equal to negative 15 plus 18 and then minus 40. We're going to get a final answer of negative 37 Newton meters. And there we go. Any questions on net torque? Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want me to start doing free weekly group sessions at your university, please post in the comments below or email me at dan at danthetutor.com. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.